hello hello everyone and welcome back to my channel tonight i've got a fun one for you i actually have to go down to the oxford circus area to run a little errand and i thought what better excuse to then go see the oxford street and the regent street christmas lights it's a monday night so hopefully it won't be too crowded but i'm gonna do my best to capture some footage throughout and if i'm really ambitious I'm hoping to go from like the area of like Liberty of London all the way over through to like Selfridges um, and then see Regent Street in between. Some of my absolute favorite areas for the Christmas lights and the Christmas windows. And let's go check it out and see what we see. Are you ready? <laughs> Off we go. Oh my gosh, this is just my favorite time of year in London. London truly shines at Christmas and the proof is essentially in the pudding, so to speak. We started out behind Liberty of London on Carnaby Street, which is kind of a bit more kind of, I would say, understated than in previous years, but Carnaby Street kind of is always such a great festive place to be at Christmas. They have tons of kind of lovely kind of words, um, words of kind of love and hope. Um, all along Carnaby Street, so that was really lovely to see. And then from there, we continued on down through to the famous Regent Street. So Regent Street, if we had to classify it, would be described as the grand, grand dam of Christmas lights in London. It is I think actually classified as the largest kind of Christmas display in London and the entire street is just filled with the most stunning dramatic kind of angels with these big wings kind of stretched across the street and it stretches all the way kind of from the top of Regent Street at Oxford Circus all the way down through into Piccadilly Circus and then actually even continues down a bit towards the Pall Mall as well so it is something magnificent to see and I always it's always my favorite to go to every year then from there, we actually made our way over into by Fortnum and Mason. Now, the Fortnum and Mason Christmas display this year is the they've taken over the entire facade of their building to transform it into an advent calendar. So you see on screen that some dates are lit up and some dates are not because that showcases you know, essentially um, it's counting kind of down the days to Christmas, so that's quite cool. And we also took a kind of sneak peek closer into the Fortnum and Mason windows, and the windows are actually all modeled after historic uh, Fortnum and Mason Christmas cards, which was also really special to see. From there, we made our way over into the Burlington Arcade, and this was also just a wonderful surprise. It wasn't something I necessarily kind of had thought to do, but as we were over there, we saw kind of out of the corner of our eyes and realized, oh my gosh, the Burlington Arcade has the, it's completely lined with Christmas trees, and the whole ceiling has these beautiful kind of red, I guess ornament-like fixtures or baubles kind of hanging from the ceiling. So that was really, really spectacular to see. And there also is in the middle of it, a Moe and Chandon uh, swing, which we all took turns kind of posing for pictures on. It definitely does swing, so consider yourself warned, but was such a fun thing to go see. Then from there, we kind of turn the corner over um, to see the famous kind of Cartier store, all decorated for Christmas. Every year, Cartier is one of the go-to kind of retail storefronts to see, and it just looks like the most beautiful, stunning jewel box, and it did not disappoint. 
After we continued down New Bond Street, which always has the same kind of lights every year, but they are beautiful and ornate, kind of like these icy kind of white kind of sculptures in different shapes and they are just lovely. And it's also really fun on New Bond Street to look at all the Christmas windows for the stores. And I'm sorry that I didn't take any pictures of them, but it would be something that I recommend doing when you're there. And then from there, we went on to Oxford Street, which um, I would say is probably kind of the least exciting out of all of them. There, um, you have to kind of, they're basically kind of all these, uh, how do you describe it? Like banners, with like LED banners with kind of different words and messages and kind of positive Christmassy things being shared on them, which is really nice to see, but I guess it pales a bit in comparison to some of the other uh, sites, but of course still worth seeing as well. Um, we actually didn't stop there, but I would also really recommend walking down South Moulton Street, which is off of Oxford Street as well, because they always do these really dramatic archways. And if I have a picture from years past, I will pop it in. Um, but we then made our way down to Selfridges and every year Selfridges is one of the iconic places that you just must go check out in the Christmas time. Their windows are always really, really well done and this year was no exception. So much attention to detail and kind of creative flair. And as a creative person myself, I just loved checking them out. Then, as we were kind of looking at the Selfridges windows, it was actually starting to rain a bit, but we had heard that Selfridges is doing this pop-up outdoor Christmas market this year, so we decided to brave the rain for a bit longer and went and popped in there. And um, due to the UK's current restrictions, you do need to have a substantial meal when you consume alcohol. So we immediately walked in, we're like, oh, we want mulled wine. And then we were promptly told we couldn't have it until we showed proof of food. <laughs> So yeah, put a little bit of a cramp in our plans, but those are the guidelines. And it's really lovely inside. There's um, kind of all these like different, uh, there's a stand, like um, a Sicilian stand, which really caught my eye that no joke has Dolce and Gabbana Panettone for I think like 42 pounds. How fabulous. Um, but then there were all these other kind of either food stands or gift stands or ornament stands. It's quite small. It's probably only like, you know, I don't even know, maybe like a third of a city block kind of long. And then on the outdoor back half, there's all these food trucks where you can go and get some different kind of bites to eat. They had Indian options. They had like a vegan vegetarian option, a kind of um, this like really kind of cheesy pasta option, a Venezuelan option, and and um, I think barbecue and, and a couple more that I didn't see. So really quite fun, you know, if you're in the Selfridges area and you're feeling a bit hungry or peckish as we'd say here in the UK, makes for a great stop to go check out. And then um, after the Selfridges Christmas market, we decided we were really hungry for dinner, so we went over um, just to get a bite to eat before calling it a night. But I will give an honorable shout out. Um, this was actually not done on this walk, but um, I did go and experience the Marlebone High Street Christmas lights on another night, so I'm gonna put them in right now because if you are in the area of Selfridges, it's super easy just to continue on and 
go down Marlebone High Street, which has lovely Christmas lights, plus tons of wonderful kind of eating out um, options there as well, should you be hungry and a bit chilly after all of your long walking. So with that said, guys, I am going to close up this video here. This is just one of kind of many fabulous things to do in London during Christmas. And so hope that you've enjoyed this guide. You've gotten maybe a few things to kind of either tick off on your Christmas, uh, future Christmas travel bucket list, or if you're a local here in London, you're getting some more inspo on kind of some outdoor things that you can do while we're still under some of these local restrictions. If you like this content, guys, please hit that like button. If you want to leave a comment, would love to hear your feedback, what you liked, what you didn't like, what you want to see more of on this channel and if you want to see more content like this I've just hinted that I'm gonna do more Christmassy content in London but I also have tons and tons of travel videos and I have so many more in the pipeline that I've recorded in past years but have never brought to life but now that I've got some more time on my hands you're gonna be seeing those all coming up on my channel super soon so thanks again guys for tuning in and I will see you soon